Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm your host, Kei'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Here in Hawaii, we all say Maui no ka'oi, which means Maui is number one, and it really is. If you take a look at the beauty of the land, the people, the environment, it's just a wonderful place to live. The world wants to live on, on Maui, uh, but we have a problem. We have a critical shortage of housing available for locals on Maui. I'm not talking only about being able to own a home. I'm talking about being able to rent homes. And at the same time, we have the need of people to be able to make a little bit of extra income by renting out their homes as vacation rental. The problem is that our government leaders sometimes don't see the big picture altogether and put some of these things like vacation rentals and housing in categories opposite each other, saying that they, they hurt each other. Uh, we have a measure that is now before the Maui County Council that could possibly end 7,000 permits for vacation rentals in the hope, they believe, of increasing the li likelihood of having local housing. I'm not sure it works that way, and I've got someone today who's an expert in the field because her business is vacation rentals. Jen Russo is the executive director of the Maui Vacation Rental Association, and she's going to chat with us a bit today. Jen, welcome to the program. Thank you for inviting me. Well, so glad. Uh, I wish I was there on Maui today. Uh, love your island, and uh, I understand you grew up in Lahaina. I did, yes. You went to Lahaina Luna High School? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. So you're a Maui girl through and through, and Absolutely. now you have the privilege of being able to work there. What is one of the things that you have seen happen in the housing market? Uh, have you seen it, it difficulty for your classmates at Lahaina Luna to be able to get homes today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, homes, the inventory here, uh, there's just not enough housing. And so what we see, you know, the, the market has been robust. We're seeing um, home prices increase, average median uh, to over $1 million. So not only do we have an inventory problem, um, we're also getting priced out. What do you think are the causes of the housing shortage? That, that is something that we talk about and research quite a bit at the Grassroot Institute. And so I'm really asking you as, as a Maui resident, as somebody who has lived there all, all her life and, and what you see, what, what do you consider to be the causes? I think we're not building enough housing. Hmm. Um, at, our, at our recent uh, county council meeting this past Friday, um, Council Member County Rollins Fernandez put a, a chart up that showed when housing um, building was spiking. And those years were 1930s and 1960s. So it's been a, quite a while. Um, they've leveled off since then and they haven't gone back up. You know, there are a lot of people who say there's nowhere to build, that, that there's no space on the island of Maui. Uh, and uh, what are your thoughts about that as you drive from side to side on the island and so forth? Uh, I do see land that um, could be made available. Uh, you know, I think it's getting the entitlements, having the right zoning, um, and of course, uh, making these processes a little bit easier for developers to navigate, for builders to navigate. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, it is a tough thing for developers to be able to build now as well as individuals to be able to build homes and acquire them and so forth. But today we're going to talk about vacation rentals and what the relationship is between vacation rentals and the supply of housing. Tell me a little bit first about your organization, the Maui Vacation Rental Association. Who are they and, and what do they do? Now, a Vacation Rental Association is a, uh, it's a membership organization, a merchant organization. Uh, we're comprised of owners of vacation rentals, managers of vacation rentals, uh, people involved in the uh, tertiary businesses um, that support vacation rentals. And, um, you know, what I do is advocate. I um, do county liaison work for these folks and trying to stay on top of, especially like during COVID, when the environment um, was changing rapidly around rules and regulations. 
um, and just um, general outreach and information for these folks as well. How many members do you have? And uh, along with that, um, how, how many vacation rentals are there on, on the island of Maui? So we have around 200 members. Um, but our outreach, um, I would say, with our newsletter and such is more like 1, 1,000, 1,500. But we have, uh, if we're just talking tax classification or short-term rental tax classification here in Maui County, there are uh, upwards of 13,000 units in vacation rental. So there are about 13,000 units. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, the county council has been considering a measure that may affect up to 7,000 uh, of those units. Tell our, our viewers today what the county council is considering. You know, Why are they considering phasing out some of these vacation rentals? Well, the proposal is to uh, phase out the vacation rentals in the apartment district. And that's where you get that 7,000 number from. Okay. Um, and the intent of that particular proposal was to create affordable housing. Um, now at the meeting that occurred last week, Wednesday in the Planning Sustainable Land Use Committee, um, they have a new proposal. And so the new proposal says uh, that those properties in the sea level rise exposure area in the apartment districts would be able to continue that use in vacation rental, but those outside of sea level rise exposure area uh, would be banned from this use beginning January 1st, 2023. So there is a, you know, two of these proposals going out there at the last planning and sustainable land use committee meeting. Uh, they said they're going to focus on that second one that I'm talking about. Well, what kind of testimony was given at the hearings? Well, what what does your association say and what are most people telling the county council about this? Uh, there's a number of issues with these kind of proposals. Um, in my testimony, uh, I wanted to talk about how the vacation rental industry does support affordable housing. Um, the affordable housing fund that we have here in Maui County, the vacation rentals have raised uh, upwards of 18 million in the last three years. And that's more than the hotels um, owner occupied and other businesses in Maui combined. And this last fiscal year, um, we raised eight, over 8 million for that affordable housing fund. So you don't see a conflict between having a robust vacation rental industry and having the opportunity for affordable housing on Maui? Well, our vacation rental um, industry on Maui is highly regulated. Um, so we're not seeing rampant number of increases at all. And the county with their tax scheme has um, created a way for us to leverage benefits directly to the community. Um, in fact, November 1st, we have a new Maui County TAT tax and um, visitor accommodations will be paying an additional 3% to Maui County. So what, what position has the Maui Vacation Rental Association taken on the, on the newest proposal? What, what are they telling the council members? Um, right. Well, this is very new, uh, this proposal, but uh, some of the problems with this proposal are, uh, I think there's about 3,600 rentals now that would be targeted. And, um, you know, that is going to have an impact on our taxes. Uh, vacation rentals, on average, pay about $10,000 per unit in real property tax. And, um, you know, when you compare to a hotel room, that's about $3,500 average in real property tax. So eliminating these vacation rentals will have an impact on uh, the financial stability of the county. 
And not to mention um, removing the vested rights. This is a legal permitted, uh, actually doesn't require a permit in the case of these A1 uh, apartments of certain properties, but it is a legal use. And um, by divesting these owners of this legal use, um, that's going to create lawsuits for the county. And that's lawsuits that the um, taxpayers are going to have to bear. Well, those sound like some very insightful uh, positions to be taking. First of all, to, to recognize that if the county acts on this new proposal, they will actually be hurting their tax base. And ultimately, that will affect services and the government uh, provision of needs on the island of Maui. And secondly, you brought up a very important point, and that is the issue of property rights, the, the legal rights that owners have as to how they can use their property. Uh, mm -hmm. now, now, some people have strong objections to vacation rentals, uh, and they've expressed that at the testimony and also in, in many other venues as well. What, what are some of the objections? What's some of the opposition that you hear from the public to vacation rentals? Um, there is this increasing um, uh, dissatisfaction with the industry. I think that's what HTA calls it in their, um, their uh, surveys. And so I think there is a bit of frustration with traffic and um, fear of COVID and these kinds of things, but housing at the forefront. Um, people are frustrated that they can't have housing, can't find housing. And so they're looking to vacation rentals. But um, when you look at the long-term renting of these particular vacation rentals in the apartment district. They come with issues like uh, those in the sea level rise um, will have to have beach nourishment, um, you know, special assessments to those buildings that would create a problem for the rental, you know, the rental price. Um, also, parking and storage, these kind of um, basic needs for the renters, they might not have that because these buildings have been used as vacation rentals. Many of them were built to be vacation rentals or second homes or seasonal homes. What I hear you saying, Jen, is that um, many of these vacation rental units would simply not be suitable for long-term housing. And so uh, removing them from the market in vacation rentals isn't going to solve the housing problem and it's going to create other problems in terms of being able to deal with the sea level rise and, and other improvements that would be necessary. So that there's really no, no conflict really in having them operate and the market for housing. Yeah. Um, also, many of these um, units that are in vacation rental are used as second homes. So those people who use them as second homes probably wouldn't rent them long term either. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and I want to explore this topic a little bit more with you. And in particular, uh, I, I want to ask you about the idea of, of the rights of, of individuals to be able to rent their property or their homes out as vacation rentals. So don't go away. Uh, we'll be back with Jen Russo of the Maui Vacation Rental Association on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. We'll be right back. My name is Mark Schlau. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program comes on every other Monday, one o'clock, and we talk about a lot of different subjects, all of them law related in some way, either life or practice. And I try to 
have a diversity of guests that can talk about different topics of interest. So please join us. Think Tech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea program, every other Monday, one o'clock in the afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back to Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. We're on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network and talking with Jen Russo, the Executive Director of the Maui Vacation Rental Association. She's uh, giving us some insights in into one of the controversial measures that the Maui County Council is considering. Jen, uh, I wanted to explore with you a little bit more the, the public's feelings uh, about uh, vacation rental. Uh, on the one hand, vacation rentals are, are property. They, they belong to owners, and I believe your association holds that owners should have the right to be able to rent th them out. Uh, th that's their property. Uh, uh, how well is that principle understood throughout the island of Maui amongst leaders and, and people, the idea of personal property rights? Uh, probably not very well. Um, this use is a legal use according to Maui County Code. And um, yeah, it's a very touchy subject here. I think a lot of people don't understand property rights and don't understand why uh, you should have the right to vacation rent your property as you know a legal use. Also, the ramifications of purchasing that property with that use and then divesting that use from them during their ownership. Now, now who are vacation rental owners? Um, are they big corporations that operate hundreds of vacation rental units and so forth? Are they um, mom and pop? Uh, are they uh, local residents? Who are they and who benefits from the renting of vacation rental units? Uh, they are usually individuals. Um, there are a number of owners that come from the state of Hawaii, uh, but there's a lot of owners that are uh, offshore owners. Owners, And um, they are mom and pop. Each one of these vacation rentals is operating as a small business. And uh, a lot of times they have a small business management company that is assisting them. Um, they support uh, all cleaning businesses and landscapers and uh, IT businesses that come and do the um, internet connections and set up the, the rooms. There's um, interior design and architecture, construction. These places have to be renovated uh, quite regularly to uh, be rented out. And, and who are the clients, the renters th themselves? Are, are they mostly uh, um, mainland and international tourists, or, or do we have locals who rent these vacation rental homes? I would say all of the above. Um, you know, during the pandemic, it was more limited to just local families. Um, now that we're opening up, it's uh, domestic and international. So during the pandemic, when we had restricted travel to Hawaii, you said most of the units were rented by locals. Well, what is the purpose that, that locals rent? Right. I, I would say that was a very uh, small percentage. Actually, during okay. the pandemic, excuse me, during the pandemic, uh, vacation rentals were not permitted to be open. Right, right. Until October. Uh, I correct myself on that. Yeah, yeah. But um, when they did open up, um, there were a lot of locals traveling at, in the beginning, and the um, you know they they come with room for a family, and usually there's a kitchen. So these kind of things appeal to local travelers. How do you think we can bring some reconciliation between? those in the community who support the idea of vacation rentals and those in the community who have various objections to them. Uh, 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 what is one way to be able to 
come to the place of seeing eye to eye? Um, I think we have to be educated a little bit more about the vacation rentals themselves because these are small accommodation, um, small businesses, and um, they are highly regulated. This is a really good example of managed tourism. This is a good example of uh, sustainable regenerative tourism. Um, every permitted is our short-term rental home and um, bed and breakfast operations that we have here are basically a partnership with the county. Um, these apartment district condos are all small businesses and supporting a small business network. And so, you know, this is kind of uh, where we need to move in that direction. If you were to just kind of list the, the benefits of allowing for the vacation rental industry to flourish on Maui, what would those benefits be to the local community? Um, this industry raises 37% of our real property taxes. So our residents are directly benefiting from that. Um, that represents 17% of our operating budget here in Valley County. Um, we're keeping owner-occupied tax class taxes low. Well, that's quite a boost to the local economy, and uh, that also pays for government services as well. So this is an important part of Maui's economy. What would you like to say to our county council members as they continue to weigh this situation? How would you encourage them to think about it? Uh, I would just encourage them to look at the vacation rental industry as a legitimate part of our hospitality industry and to open the conversation and be open to learning more about uh, the benefits and um, striking a balance between leveraging what the vacation rentals can do and um, you know looking at other ways to create housing um, obviously this industry puts a lot of uh, funding into affordable housing but maybe create some incentives for these properties to do long-term rental instead of um, just banning uses. So what I hear you saying is take a twofold uh, approach. You know, encourage the vacation rental industry, don't discourage it, but find a pathway to increase the amount of, of housing and uh, particularly affordable housing on Maui, solve the actual problems that keep the supply of housing low. Well, th that sounds like a good approach and I wish you the best of luck as you talk to county council members. Uh, before we go, any last thoughts for our viewers today? Thank you so much for inviting me to speak to this. Um, you can go to our website to learn more, uh, mvra.net. And um, you can always find our contact information if you have any questions on our website as well. And mahalo for inviting us. Wonderful. Jen, thank you so much for informing us today. We appreciate it very much. You've all been listening to Jen Russo, the Executive Director of the Maui Vacation Rental Association. And until next time, I'm Kili'i Akina on ThinkTech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. Aloha.